Uh, I mean, nothing really. I'm pretty much doing the same things in the past, more or less. But uh, I do, uh, I can't say I really uh, can see what people like playing in this defense and uh, for Greg on the defensive side of the ball. Why is that? I mean, it's just the way he runs the system. I mean, it's just a, it's a high energy, like uh, just the overall feeling when you're on this defense. Like it's, everybody, you want to be aggressive, you want to attack, you just want to get after it. <laughs> What did you um, what did you focus on? What did you focus on in the off season, like before you were here for the off season program? Mm -hmm. What was kind of your focus this year? Uh, building my upper body strength back. You know, I had a couple of nagging shoulder injuries over the last year, and uh, just getting that strength up, getting working on my footwork, and I still plan to work on my footwork. Going down to Houston for about two and a half weeks to do uh, some footwork with a guy like um, <clears throat> Footwork King. And I uh, spend like two weeks with the family and then get back down to Atlanta, spend two, two to three and a half weeks with uh, Chuck Smith down in Gata and uh, right around Duluth, really. You had the, uh, the career highs in sacks, obviously, last year with seven. How much more do you believe you're, you're capable of accomplishing now? Like you kind of just scratched the surface. I mean, how much more can you do, do you think? Uh, I mean, I always feel like, uh, for me, I always feel like the sky's the limit for me. I just got to find, I just have to go out there and reach it. Like, I can't just say, Oh, I think I could get X number of this, X number of sacks, X number of TFLs. I feel like I can be as great as I as great as I can be, but I have to go out there and put the work in. I can't just say the words and not put in the work. And now I'm at the point where I've sort of realized what I can do. Now I have to keep working and mentally preparing myself to have that mentality every time that I can do this and I need to do that much and more uh, going into this season. The contract year for you, uh, mm -hmm. how big? I mean, it's uh, of course, it's big. It's big for anybody. Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna treat it any worse. Or when people, I always hear people talk about uh, the contract year and all that. I mean, every year is pretty much a contract year in my mind. Ever since I got drafted here, in the back of my mind, and I don't know, not a lot, not a lot of guys think of it, but I always think if I if I don't do my job, I get cut. That's that's flat out what it is. There's no securities in this in this uh, line of work. There's first rounders who get cut. There's second rounders who get cut. There's third rounders and so on. And that's the type of mentality I've had every year I've been here is that if I don't do my job, I'm gone. So that's pretty much how I look at that. And uh, the better I do my job, the more secure you are naturally because you're doing your job efficiently and well. What did you make of Greg sticking with the 3-4? That's the scheme you're familiar mm. with. I know you said in the 4-3 stuff in Georgia, but mm. what was the thought process with not knowing what he might run and what you mm. sticking with the 3-4? I mean, it's just the same old, same old to me. Uh, it's not much change. I mean, it's status quo, so I mean, it's just different different name calls and different people. What are your early impressions of working with CJ and what do you think he brings to the mm. defense? Uh, having CJ back there is a pretty good asset to have. He's a uh, great guy. He uh, is, uh, he's, he's vocal when he needs to be, so when you hear his voice, you know there's like a, sort of a, there's a lot of depth behind, a lot of bass in there, so he's just really strong about what he calls. Like, he's not going to second guess himself. When he makes a call, that's what we're running. If he makes a check, that's what we're running. And everybody knows when they hear that voice what to do. No, no one ever questions or no one ever has any side thoughts like, hey, is he sure about this? Like when you just have, he's a, he's a guy you got respect for and you know he's going to be where he needs to be no matter how and when. What's it like playing for Adam Gase? Oh, I mean, uh, Gase is a cool cat. I mean, really uh, <coughs> like him as a coach. He talks trash. Every now and then, I mean, he's involved with the guys. And, uh, I mean, he's just a guy uh, you, you love playing for. I mean, we were cutting up today in the uh, D-line drill. I mean, he just he, he likes getting involved with guys and making sure everybody's working. And recognize when you're in the building, when you're out there, make the most of it and don't just, don't just BS your way through it. What have you made of Ja'Kai Boy in the month or so he's been around? I mean, even, even though he's a Gator, he's still a, still a good guy. Uh, I always like to trash talking a little bit. Uh, they won the last two while I was there. I won the first two. Uh, and uh, he's, a, he's a guy who is eager to work, eager to prove himself, and he's got a good bend around the corner. And uh, he's going to be a good asset to us. And he's just eager to prove himself. Can you offer any insight when the defense breaks the huddle? The, uh, come get some. Can you offer any insight <laughs> from how that come together? I mean, that's just our mentality. No matter who we line up against, no matter if it's uh, I mean, going against our guys, I mean, we're going to be, we're going to be safe, but between those whistles, it's doggy dog mentality. Like it's, it's in, in my mind, it's F you before it's F me. And, um, and that, that's just, that's just how it is.